So here I was, just passing time at August Dunlow Spaceport when I had a thought, what if we took the salvage modules off the Reclaimer and instead fitted them to the much smaller Vulture? Can this even be done? At first I assumed they would just be incompatible, like they must be different sizes or something. It's something we'd seen with the prospect from the mole in mining, but on checking the vehicle loadout manager I was in for a surprise. They were actually both the same size and so you can fit the trawler modules to the Vulture. Are they different sizes? Nope, same size. Vlad was also with me, also getting ready to head out, but for him it would be a stock vulture. The Reclaimer turrets do seem to be much faster than a vulture at salvaging, but the salvage heads on the two ships are exactly the same, called Bela. It appears at face value that only the modules are different. The Reclaimer's widest beam, the trawler, covers an area 6 meters wide. Compare that to the 1.5 meter wide coverage of the Cinch module, one of the vulture's stock fittings. And with the ability to control two trawler modules at once on the vulture, the the question had to be asked, would this improve the Vulture's salvage time and profit? We wanted to test this over a one hour period, Vlaz would also be out salvaging using a stock Vulture. On arriving at Crow One, it didn't take long to find a wreck with this already pretty damaged staff era. My gut told me to split the beams a bit to maximise the area being hit. A quick skim over the numbers told us that while the speed for stripping a given area is about 12 times slower, the actual difference in area between a 1.5 meter diameter circle and a 6 meter diameter circle is about 14 times. And it wasn't long before I'd filled my first box. As I worked on the second box, I had a dilemma to solve. I hadn't brought along a multi-tool. I would need to sacrifice an entire SCU of salvage to create one, along with the tractor beam attachment that I needed to move boxes. We'd keep this wasted SCU of salvage in mind though, because if we want to know how many credits per hour, then counting all the salvage that we've actually completed makes more sense. And as I fired up the beams again, Vlasp had some thoughts on the use of these modules. Yeah, it's, it's interesting, uh, one, that they're um, the same size. It's, I mean, it's, it's definitely a bug, but two... I don't think it is a bug, I think this is like... Oh. It's the same as with mining, right? Like, my, there's different mining modules. They haven't made them for sale yet, but I think that that's the intention. Like, a lot of people have talked about the, the salvage doesn't make enough money. The way I look at it is, it's like if you go out with a stock mining ship, right? Like you're not going to make as much as if you buy the right mining heads and the modules. And, and I think that we'll probably see even better ones as well. You know, even better um, modules and different salvage heads. And that'll be cool. Was I being overly optimistic in how much difference these modules would make to the profitability of this run? We'd have some time to go before finding out. They did feel faster at the time, but on watching this back and comparing to the performance of Reclaimer turrets, the advantage is definitely thinner than I thought. And after maybe 10 minutes, it was time to check in with Vlad's progress. How many boxes have you done? I'm still trying to get my second one out. Like, that's, that's how bad this is. I've done six. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> now, in the moment, this seemed to be a big indicator that the trawler modules were much faster. But I later learned that this was Vlad's first time out salvaging, and so learning as he went was slowing him more than was ideal for our testing. Still, we had the hour time limit, at the very least, to see what I could salvage and how much it made in credits to fall back on. Eventually though, this wreck was spent, and another would have to be found. And at this point I had taken to overlaying the two beams on top of each other. Again, I couldn't be entirely sure at the time, but this did seem to fill the tank faster. Okay. 
but there is something quite satisfying about seeing the cargo bay fill up with these boxes. And Vlaz would chime in again with some lessons he was learning too, especially with what had been slowing him down in the beginning. Well, I was trying to get like every little bit of it out, and instead what I should be doing is just going over the, the whole bunks in the area. And blah, blah, blah. Yes, yeah. Progress on Team Trawler was looking good though, with the only delays being the regular trips down to the cargo bay to manage the boxes. Nonetheless, a rhythm was developing. Now, as I mentioned, there will be some time costs built into the salvage profession, and one of them is pirates or just attackers in general. And while trying to fill the next round of boxes, I would come under attack here at the wreck. On this occasion, it was only an NPC, but I'd made the decision to immediately escape from any incoming contact before I even set out for the day. Play it safe and move on. With our recent testing with the Reclaimer, this seems to be the salvager's safest bet to avoid losing life and cargo. At Hurst and L3, I found a dilapidated 890 jump, the perfect hull to continue stripping. Coverall sadly cannot hold things like weapons or utility tools, something CIG should consider changing. Because of this, my multi-tool was always where I dropped it at the bottom of the ladder. And the ship was getting full. My vulture is too full, like I've got 13. Let's see if I can like jam them in the gap, the walkway, keep going. <laughs> there was still time in our allotted hour to fill a few more boxes and make the journey back to Crusader, and knowing the ship was already full was a big boost in motivation. Fifteen boxes were now in the bay and there was a little in the filler station too, but based on the time it seems safer to start the journey back now. Um, I mean I could I could fill up the thing as well I suppose, but you know. On landing, I'd catch the shuttle to Cloudry platform and I would head straight for the trade division. We'd previously sold our vulture salvage at terminals of scrapyards like Breer's Breakyard, so here at the trade division, I'd be in for a nice surprise. 12 SCU in the cargo comes to 92,000, so almost 100k. I've got two more as well. Um, there should be three more aboard, but it's only showing two. So I'm going to sell those for 92,000 and then we'll sell the other two, add the two together and 15,000 for the two. So it's over 100k. So the actual profit from this trade was 107,790 credits. But there was a box unaccounted for in there as well, and we'd used a box worth of salvage to create the multi-tool and tract beam attachment. If we factor those in too, we have a figure of 123,180 credits. Which is okay for an hour, not spectacular, but okay. We did have to account for being attacked and the travel time between the grunge points, but I think that kind of thing will be a regular concern for salvage vessels once 318 goes live. We didn't get to answer the question though. Are trawler modules faster at filling boxes than the stock modules of the Vulture? Well, I still wanted to know. And the most direct way to test this, I suppose, is a direct face-off between the two. Yeah, I go to the abrade. Okay, use the abrade then. The abrade, the abrade's good, yeah. Three, two, one, go. Mm. 
halfway. Wait, did you? That okay, was that was that was very close. That was extremely close, in fact. Okay, and that was with the um, the wider one, right? Yep. Okay, yeah, cool, cool, cool. Shoot, I, I got an encoding error. That's okay. That's okay, because because that was that was really close. There are two default modules on the Vulture, the Cinch and the Abrade. The Abrade is a wider beam, but nowhere near as wide as the trawler we were testing here. But it was faster within its given area. And in our first test, the Abrade had pretty much been the same speed as the trawler. There is a little more to this, we'll see shortly. But next we'll be testing the hyper-efficient Cinch against the trawler. Let's try again with the, if you use the Cinch module, and we'll do one more, three, Two, one, go. Okay, Tim. Done. Okay, so that's interesting. That seemed to go by way faster than your other one did too. That did. I, that, that felt a lot faster actually, yeah. So the trawler had been considerably faster than the cinch, but I wanted to run again against the braid module to really confirm that they were about on par. However, there was also something else going on and I would find out about it quite by accident. All right, I'm ready when you are. Here's a question for you. Do you space yeah. your beams out or do you keep them together? So I keep them together so that way I can just harvest that one space of the hull as quickly as I can. And yes. I keep my beam moving as fast as I can to keep that um, extraction rate high. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Does the extra extraction rate fall as you clear? Okay, so... It, yeah. I did not know that, see, I'm, I'm learning things as we go. I would be trying this technique in the showdown to come. What kind of effect would it have? I'm ready. Okay, three, two, one, go. I think that was your trick of moving it around a lot that maybe made the difference. Well, how I was salvaging was just holding it over a spot and then waiting till it was empty and moving it slowly, you know, along. Um, yeah. And that was with the abrade, right? That was the braid? Yeah, it was a braid, yeah. Okay, so that's interesting. Wow. Because I was doing that before as well. So, um, yeah. so it seems, seems like as long as, you know, if you say stationary, it, it's roughly the same, well, not stationary, but you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, pretty much stationary. Like, yeah, if you, you know, when you when you see the video, you'll see, like, how I have been salvaging. Uh, you know, it's kind of extremely slow move movement, so... The, the moving it around like that, I guess, really does work, because that was a big difference in the, the times between the two runs. We discussed some of the finer points of salvage before closing things out. I, there's, there's the efficiency though of each scraper as well, where mm. you are losing material. Yes. It's like the abrade of you just you're just wasting material. Well, ultimately, in the world of gaming, a lot of these like 
the in-game professions come down to credits per hour. Like obviously there's the enjoyment of doing the thing. At the moment with the abundance of racks, the, the efficiency almost doesn't matter, right? It's like who can fill the boxes the fastest. Obviously if they change that and get rid of a lot of the racks then um, efficiency would technically become more important because you want to get as much material out of a rack that you could. But surely then at that point it's like it's time that like ruins your economy, you know? If you've got a whole org that's gonna, you know, strip apart like a C2 like this in five minutes and and be able to get more out of it, then I can see that being beneficial, especially if you're out in the middle of nowhere eventually and you're going to need every bit of material you can get to manufacture or whatever. Right, but for manufacturing purposes, absolutely. But what I mean is for yeah. the current game, salvage yeah. doesn't pay very well. I don't play for money ever, so like I have no like yardstick to judge this against. What is a good credits per hour rate in this game? A, a good credits per hour is um, about 500,000. Okay, now, in this very video, like we did an hour, me and Vlas did an hour test, like we each went out and were salvaging for an hour, and I made 123,000 credits. Uh, well, 107,000, should have been 123, but one of the boxes didn't show up in the trade terminal and I needed to make a multi-tool, so like we were including that in the figure because if someone went out with a multi-tool, they wouldn't have needed to do that. So even solo is like considerably below what you consider like a good income um, per hour. And as a group, like with the reclaimer, it throws it so out of whack. Like we, we did, again, we did it and it was like, after an hour of doing it, each person made like 50,000 credits, I think 52,000. Like I do feel like they need to increase the value of it a bit. And mining, um. and mining too. They need to increase the value of that too. So there you go. It seems to be the case that the trawler is in fact considerably faster than the stock modules of the Vulture at the cost of wasted material from the wrecks. This technically could become a factor if CIG reduced the number of wrecks when 318 goes live, but not really, as the pay for salvage is already not hugely attractive for the time commitment. Making wrecks more scarce would encourage efficiency, but probably not salvage itself. As always, I want to thank all of you at home for watching and all of our amazing patrons who you can see on screen right now. Without these very generous people, none of the videos on the channel would be possible and I am enormously grateful to all of you for the help. Thank you. We will be back with more from the 318 PTU very soon and again, thank you all for watching.